Hello everyone, my name is David. Today we are going to take a look at another horrible case with you. In every human body there are 206 bones, but today's case is one where a murderer cut a 62-year-old woman into 300 pieces. Anyone who heard about this horrific incident was shaken to the core. When the police investigation revealed the identity of the woman's killer, even the family members were astonished. So, who was the killer of Usha Sri? What was the reason behind killing Usha? And with what weapon was her body cut? All these questions will be answered in the next few minutes. In Bhubaneswar, the capital city of Odisha state, there is a place called Nayapali, where a large bungalow housed retired Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Somnath Parada of the Indian Army and his wife Usha Sri Samal. Before moving forward, let me tell you that the city where they both lived is also called Temple City and Bhubaneswar got this nickname due to the presence of 700 temples there. Somnath Parida joined the Indian Army as a second lieutenant in 1970. He served in the army as a doctor and Dr. Somnath Parida was counted among the best surgeons in the army. After working in the army for about 22 years, Somnath retired in 1992. After retiring from the army, Somnath worked for a long time at the World Health Organization. After that, he also started his own clinic. Dr. Somnath and his wife had two children. Their son Lalit, who became a doctor, settled in America, and Somnath's daughter had already settled in Dubai. Both children stayed away from their parents, but still, they talked to their mother three or four times a week. But you will surprise about this thing that both children didn't talk to their father, and the reason behind it was Somnath Parada's behavior. Actually, Somnath would get angry very quickly, which led to the absence of any social life in his life. Although they had a big villa, besides Somnath and Ushasri, no one else lived there. Somnath hardly talked to his neighbors, and if any stranger parked a car outside their house, Somnath would shout at them too. Visitors from Somnath's relatives were also very rare. Due to Somnath's strange behavior, he never made any close friends in his entire life. When we were researching this case, Somnath's lifestyle seemed very strange to us. Actually, he used to go to sleep around 6 o'clock in the evening and wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Anyway, time was passing, and now it was 2013. Both of Somnath Parada's children used to call their mother three to four times a week. As always, when Lalit called his mother at the beginning of June, her phone would be switched off. So he thought maybe his mom's phone battery had run out, or she might be busy somewhere. Therefore, he tried again after a while, but the phone still remained switched off. The next day, he called his mom's number again, but her phone was still switched off. This made Lalit worry about his mother, so he called his father. When he asked his father about his mother, Somnath told his son, Your mother went to Dubai to visit your sister a few days ago, and that's probably why her phone is switched off. Lalit found this very strange because Neither his mother nor his sister had told him about his mother going to Dubai before that day. Now Lalit directly calls his sister to ask about his mother. But Lalit's sister tells him that she didn't call their mother to Dubai, and she also tells him that she tried calling their mother several times, but her phone was switched off every time. Now Lalit calls his father again and says, You're lying, mom is not in Dubai. After that, Somnath starts yelling at his son and hangs up the phone. Still, Lalit calls his father several times, but now Somnath doesn't pick up Lalit's calls. After this, whenever Lalit and his sister got time, they would try calling their mother, but the phone was switched off every time. Then, about 20 days passed in a similar manner, and Ushasri didn't answer her children's calls. After that, Lalit calls his uncle Ranjan Samal and narrates everything that happened in the past 20 days. He also tells him, Please come to our house and see where my mother has been for the past 20 days, because my father is saying she's in Dubai, but my sister has informed me that mom hasn't even gone to Dubai. Upon hearing this, Lalit's uncle Ranjan, along with his another sister, comes to Somnath's house. They knock on the door for quite some time, but there's no response from inside. However, as they continue knocking on the door, after a while, instead of the door, a small window beside it opens from where Somnath Parida talks to them. When Ranjan asked about his sister Usha, Somnath started saying that she went to Dubai to be with her daughter. In response, Ranjan tells Somnath that he's lying. She hasn't gone to Dubai 
and asks him to open the door first before they talk. Upon hearing this, Somnath starts shouting at them too and closes the window, walking back into the house. After that, Usha's brother and sister stand outside, beating the door for a long time, but it doesn't open. Now Ranjan calls Lalit, and then Lalit tells his uncle to go to the police station and explain everything. After this, Ranjan and his sister come to the nearby Nayapali police station and tell the police everything that has happened in the last 20 days. After listening to the whole story, the police immediately reach Somnath Parada's house. But even after the police officer's instructions, Somnath does not open the door for quite some time, which eventually leads the police to break the door and enter his house. Once inside the house, the police see Somnath sitting quietly in one place. Once again, the police ask Somnath about his wife Usha. In response, Dr. Somnath tells the police the same thing, that on the third, his wit had gone to Dubai. However, the police also say that they asked his daughter, and she said her mother did not come to her, and her phone has been switched off for the past 20 days. Dr. Somnath is unable to answer this question, and appears a bit nervous. Then some police officers search the entire house. During the search, they are shown a room which was locked, and when the room is opened, besides two large boxes, Nothing else seems strange to the police. These were the same boxes that Dr. Somnath used to keep while serving in the Indian Army. Initially, the police think that Dr. Somnath must have kept his important belongings in them, but when the police open those boxes, they find a total of 22 steel lunch boxes, 11 lunch boxes in one box and the remaining 11 in the other. But now, seeing such a large number of lunch boxes, the police are startled. When asked about the lunch boxes, Dr. Somnath is unable to provide a proper answer. Afterwards, immediately upon opening one of the tiffins, it is noticed that everyone is taken aback. As a matter of fact, there were small pieces of meat in that tiffin, and one by one, all tiffins are opened. Then it is revealed that all tiffins are filled with pieces of meat. At first glance, it is apparent that these are pieces of human flesh, and when these pieces are counted, there were approximately 300 pieces. When police asked about these pieces, Somnath Parada says that all these pieces of flesh belong to his wife, Ushasri. Friends, before moving forward in the video, I have a small request for you. I want to let you know that behind the David True Crime channel, there is a team of five people who work hard to bring you the best quality content through thorough research. Currently, our team is entirely dependent on the YouTube Partner Program, but due to low subscribers on our channel, we are not receiving any financial support from YouTube. Therefore, we are unable to cover the expenses of video production. Without financial support, we won't be able to continue working for long. If you appreciate our efforts, you can support us according to your preference by visiting the link provided in the description. Your small support will motivate us to work effectively on the channel. Thank you. Now, let's continue with the story. After this, the police questioned Somnath about how and who did this. Afterwards, Somnath told the police a story. He said, My wife was a devotee of Sai Baba, an Indian spiritual leader and saint. Suddenly one day, Usha started banging her head on the ground, and she banged her head for so long that she died. Before dying, she told me that after her death, her last rites should be performed in Shirdi, where Sai Baba's former home used to be. Now, because Usha had died, it was not possible for me to take her to Shirdi like that, so I cut her body into pieces and packed them in tiffins, so that I could take all those tiffins to Shirdi one by one and perform Usha's last rites there. After hearing this story, the police questioned Dr. Somnath about the whereabouts of his wife's head. Then, the doctor showed the police his wife's head, which was placed on a table in their lobby. The head was quite decomposed, to the extent that the skin on the face and the hair on the head were separating. However, the smell was minimal because Somnath had used a special chemical to conceal the odor. Now the police also asked Somnath about the reason behind placing the severed head on the table. According to Somnath, he used to sit in front of that same table every day and talk to his wife, Usha, whose head was severed. Upon hearing this, Usha's relatives present there were truly shocked. However, the police were not convinced by the story of Usha's suicide that Somnath had told them. Therefore, to get to the bottom of the matter, the police began searching the entire house meticulously once again. On the other hand, 
questioning of Somnath intensified, and the revelations during this interrogation were extremely surprising. It was revealed during the police interrogation that Usha did not commit suicide. Rather, there was a fight between Somnath Parada and Usha on June 3, 2013, regarding something. During the altercation, Somnath viciously attacked his wife's head with a steel torch, causing her to collapse unconscious on the ground immediately. Despite Usha being unconscious, Somnath's anger did not subside, and he ended up killing Usha then and there. Now, Somnath had already killed his wife, Usha, but now he was worried about where he would hide her body. However, on the night of June 3rd, Somnath locked Usha's corpse in a room in his own house. The next day, when the maid came to work at their house, he immediately fired her. After that, Somnath came up with an idea and decided to cut the corpse into pieces and pack them in lunchboxes. Then Somnath went to a shop where he bought three lunchboxes and started cutting up the corpse. On the first day, he cut up the corpse into as many pieces as he could fit into those three lunchboxes. The next day, he went to another shop and bought three to four more lunchboxes, then came home and cut up Usha's corpse into pieces again and packed them. Somnath continued to do this for several days, going to a new shop every day to buy lunchboxes so that no one would suspect why he was buying so many. After a few days, Somnath Parada had cut up his wife Usha's entire body into pieces, and before packing them into the lunchboxes, he put a chemical on them that would prevent the smell of flesh from spreading in his house. Now, after packing Usha's entire body into the lunchboxes, Somnath also keeps those lunchboxes in his army-style boxes. Additionally, Somnath also used fennel in his house to prevent any smell from spreading outside. Now, because Somnath Parada was a well-known surgeon, he had a great knowledge about human anatomy. Consequently, he didn't face much difficulty in dismembering the body. In fact, Somnath didn't even use any large tools to dismember the body. He managed to cut the entire body into 300 pieces using small surgical instruments commonly used in operations. The police had already determined who and how Usha was murdered, but they hadn't yet discovered the motive for the murder. During the investigation, it was revealed that Usha suspected Somnath of having an affair with a girl working at his clinic. This suspicion often led to arguments between the couple. There had been a fight between them on June 3, 2013, over this issue as well, but this time it escalated to the point where Somnath struck Usha with a steel torch and ended her life. It was also revealed during the investigation that Somnath often dismembered his wife's body at night while he remained busy in his clinic during the day, behaving completely normally. Furthermore, even after his wife's murder, he celebrated his birthday at his clinic. On June 3rd, Usha was murdered, and on June 23rd, the murder was disclosed. However, on the same day, the police arrest and jail Somnath Parada. Charges of murder and tampering with evidence are filed against Somnath, and then the case is brought to trial at the Kurda District and Sessions Court. During the trial, Somnath Parida's son and daughter also come to India and testify against their father in court. The testimony given by the son and daughter, along with the evidence collected by the police, make it clear that Somnath Parida indeed murdered his wife and then dismembered her body into 300 pieces, placing them in a lunchbox. Thus, Somnath Parada is convicted of his own wife Usha's death on February 25, 2020, and is sentenced to imprisonment. Additionally, he is fined 50,000 rupees. Currently, Somnath is over 80 years old and is still serving his sentence in prison for his actions. So with that, the Ushasri murder case comes to an end right here. If you appreciate our efforts, like and share this video. If you haven't subscribed, do so now. Thank you.